The Harder They Fall from 1956 was a tough, edgy boxing film with a lot of crime noir elements as well. And this starred Humphrey Bogart and Rod Steiger. And right off the bat, I liked this one. That driving opening soundtrack, the credits that just zoom in your face, and a decent cast of big names, not the least of which being Humphrey Bogart. And you can't go wrong with Bogey. And apparently, this was his final film. You can kind of pick up the vibe from this film that his health wasn't the greatest in this film. But the film was amazing. And, you know, going into this film, it was really interesting. I didn't really know what it was about, only that it involved boxing. So I figured maybe the story here was that Bogey plays a, a Pauly type mentor to our up and coming Rocky type boxer. And oh no, was I wrong about that? This film here is less about, you know, the boxing underdog story and more about the behind the scenes, seedy criminal side you know, involving gangster fight promoters and rigged matches and so on. And ultimately, how this corrupt system takes a toll on the lives of the boxers themselves. It was a lot darker than I expected. And to be honest, I even debated including this in my channel because, you know, truth be told, I try to keep the films mostly clean and positive and so on. And this one did get a tad bit violent, which really surprised me for a film from the 1950s. So, you know, if you're looking for a lighter material, both subject-wise and also in regards to violence, you may want to avoid this one. But if you're with me on this one, let's kind of dive in. So basically, the story here is that Humphrey Bogart plays the character Eddie Willis. He's an ex-sports writer. He's out of work. And he meets with the character Nick Benko, who's played by Rod Steiger, who's this very dynamic fight promoter. And man, he's a very commanding actor. I loved watching his scenes. His gimmick is he's got this new talent, this monstrous boxer from Argentina, this guy Toro Moreno, who's played by real life, massively huge actor, <laughs> Mike Lane. I mean, this guy is huge. Early in the film, Eddie's able to watch him and he watches him in a sparring session. And it's clear from the beginning that despite this guy's size, he's actually not a very good boxer at all. But Nick has this scheme, is to get him out on the road, match him up all over the place with other boxers, and these other boxers are all paid to take a dive. So it'll build this guy up, and then this will all lead up to a final big boxing match where he can make this Toro guy lose, and he's going to bet against him. And, you know, Eddie can tell that this is really kind of shady at this point, but you know, he's able to put his morality aside and, you know, heck, just go along with this for the money. So they head off and it's this big, goofy promotion bus. I mean, it's a bus with a giant image of the boxer Toro planted on the side. <laughs> and the first stop was in California. And, you know, just a note, it was really cool to see some of the locales of this film, like the Beverly Hills Mo Hotel. And the film actually does a really neat job of showing location shots around these big cities. I always find that type of stuff fascinating, you know, to see how things looked 70 some years ago. Different and yet in a lot of ways just the same as today. So the first big fight happens. And again, you can tell this Toro guy might be big physically, but he really doesn't have the ability to box. And yet the first match is clearly thrown because he only wins when this other boxer he's fighting against is slip some ether on a rag. It's like put on his face before the match, before he fights him, and then he basically just comes out into the middle of the ring and topples over. So Toro wins. We see that the system of rigged fights continues as they continue to travel to these various locations. So during this crazy party, Eddie calls his wife, who hasn't been traveling with him, and we not so subtly get the idea that he's going along with this system with no real moral problems about it just yet. His wife, who's played here by Jan Sterling, is this sympathetic, understanding wife who supports him, but we can clearly see she would prefer he gets out of this dishonest stuff and just sticks to honest writing. So Toro goes up against Gus Dundee, whose previous fight was with the champion, Buddy Brannon, and it's left him just beaten and in less than perfect shape. 
And sure enough, after a quick fight with Toro, this guy Dundee just collapses and eventually just dies. And Toro, of course, is overcome with guilt about it. He thinks he's killed this guy, and he just wants to stop it all and return to Argentina, where he comes from. Now, since we're getting close to the big match with Brannon, Eddie tells Toro the truth that, look, it was actually this Brannon boxer that was responsible for beating Dundee so badly that his health was so bad that he died. He tells him it actually had nothing to do with Toro. Toro is no fighter and that all of his fights have been fixed. And what follows is fascinating too in this kind of dark sequence where this Nick character and his crew, they manipulate the facts and basically finagle their way out of any responsibility for the injuries to these fighters. I mean, the film really goes dark. And we see that this is really starting to get to Eddie. He talks to Toro and talks him into doing this final fight. And, well, you can kind of guess where it's going to go. Toro's going up against a real boxer, and this real boxer really wants to hurt a bad. And, you know, again, I'm going to stop the review here. I don't want to give away the ending, as the film does come to a brilliant conclusion. But this is not what I expected from a boxing movie. It's a very darker direction into the seedy side of rigging fights and criminal connections with the boxing world. So some quick closing thoughts. Yeah, I really admired the direction of this film by Mark Robson. I think he did Bridges of Toko Ri and films like that. He captures not only the excellent character interactions in the film, but it really feels like this is one of the earliest examples I can think of of incorporating kind of the, the shaky in-ring camera as the guys are fighting. The boxing footage is amazing, and especially when a fighter has been like beaten bad and the camera effect starts to do like the spinning, you know, with the lights moving around, it feels like you're in the ring. You know, I know this has been done many, many, many times since. I really liked how it was used in this film here. Bogart and Steiger were both amazing performers, but I really have to give praise to many of the other names in the film. Mike Lane was really believable as this big, naive boxer, Toro Moreno, and his simple nature and massive size, in a funny way, it kind of reminded me of the character Kronk from The Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> and, you know, you watch him, you want to see this guy succeed. And yet as you watch it, it's like, you know, he's just a pawn in this rig system. And you know, things aren't going to go well. And you really feel a sense of sympathy for this guy. Because he just seems like this big, but nice guy. I also enjoyed seeing the actor Jersey Joe Walcott as George. He's only briefly in the film, but I really liked his scenes as this supportive old boxing warrior. It really added to the believability and the credibility of the scenes, you know, to incorporate an actual old retired boxer. Similar note on the brief interview that you see early in the film with Joe Greb. I mean, this was an actual brain-damaged boxer, and he gives an interview about the damaging effects of the sport. I mean, just so interesting to me that this was a real-life boxer with 12-year career span as a boxer. He fought, I think, 119 bouts, and yeah, as a result, he has irreparable brain damage, and the scene is very moving. I mean, it really stands out against the rest of the film, and yet it's completely consistent with this theme. That's The Heart of the Fall from 1956. It's an excellent film that explores some darker territory in the boxing world and also features Bogart's final performance. And this one's worth checking out.